Dr. Lara Krabinova, and I will be talking about the evolution of my project. And my project, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, but it's a fusion of two words, Kamai and Chimera, because for me, that's what the project was like. Chimera is this mythological creature, all the different parts that are not even supposed to work together, but somehow they do work. So that's how I started with my project. I had all those different parts and I wasn't even sure if they would come together. So I will just walk you through the, my initial project idea, then in-country observations, then some scholarship, and then in-class applications. So initial idea was awesome. <laughs> I wanted to look at the Jataka tales and at the Mahabharata and at the Ramayana, all those Indian epics that, or uh, Buddhist stories in the case of the Jatakas that also very po popular in Cambodia. And I wanted to see how they're expressed through different forms of art. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing it. <laughs> and I'm doing it strictly for World Lit 1, because I see no other applications. And we all know how it goes with best laid plans. So my first inkling of understanding that maybe it's not the project that I will be doing was um, <laughs> even before we went to Cambodia, because I used everybody who was willing to listen, like, what do you think about that? And it turned out that the Ramayana generated the most excitement. People who have nothing to do with Cambodia or with India or the world literature were like, oh, that's awesome, I know this story. If you do a project on this, can you tell me? Like people at my gym were like, if you write a paper, can I read it? I'm like, wow, the Ramayana actually has this pool. So maybe I should focus on this. All the librarians uh, at Middlesex who were helping me with some preliminary readings were like, oh, the Ramayana. They totally abandoned everything else and they would just talk to me about the Ramayana. So I'm like, maybe there is something to it. And the Ramayana, for those of you who are not familiar, it's this awesome epic. It has some bromance, it has love story, lots of fighting. It would be an awesome Hollywood movie. <laughs> um, so, then we land in Cambodia. And the first thing, that's our first hotel, Queen Grand Boutique Hotel. <laughs> um, and that's a mural. It's a Ramayana mural. I'm pretty sure that when our organizers were looking for the hotels, they didn't have my project in mind. <laughs> but that's the first thing that we saw when we stepped in. And then we're going to Royal University of Fine Arts. They have a mural of the VMK or the Ramayana. And I'm using them interchangeably. Uh, the VMK is a Cambodian version of the Ramayana, but sometimes you can't tell the difference right away. Sometimes it's pretty clear. So the Royal Palace has this very long mural from the Ramayana. Um, and then the National Museum of Cambodia has a lot of artifacts. So here, it's from the VMK, it will tell you about the characters, it will tell you about the storyline. So it's pretty much, you cannot avoid the story if you're in Cambodia. Um, that's Angkor Wat, and that's the Ramayana. But then there were quite a few other, and some of these forms I expected to see. So I wanted to go to Angkor Wat because I knew that there would be those bar reliefs of the Ramayana. But we went to a shadow puppet show over there. And part of it, it was a storyline from the VMK. Nobody planned it this way, right? And a lot of shadow puppets were the characters from the VMK or from the Ramayana. Then we were passing through one town, and here's a sculpture of a mermaid from the VMK, and kids are playing around it. Then we go to 
uh, artisan some core and they have this uh, silk exhibit and it says right there oh my thing has gone here uh, and it says there that the uh, wedding ceremony in Cambodia it's informed by the Ramayana and the changes in outfits they also mirror some values and storylines from the Ramayana okay so um, they were even the incidents there we encountered some Ramayana VMK connections, but I <coughs> didn't realize it till much later, and I'll talk about those instances later. So after some in country observations, I had quite a few questions. So where are the books? Because as you can see from my pictures, the story is very powerful, everybody knows it anybody will converse you about the intricacies of the plot. They don't even need to prepare. Remember when we went to the Institute for uh, Teachers and they did this impromptu lesson. So the professor just said, okay, now let's talk about the VMK. And he asked students questions and they knew the answers, they knew the plot line, they knew the significance. They weren't prepping for our visit. So, but it, it didn't seem that I could find that many books. I just couldn't. I didn't buy a single VMK book, even though the Ramayana up there, you can see the books that I found in my local library. So there are some cartoons, visual novels, there are uh, stories told from the perspective of Sita, or Ravana, you don't need to look for them. But I couldn't find that many books. So there are two VMKs. One is the, the blue one, the boring looking one. It's <laughs> a translation by Jacob and uh, it reads the way it looks. It's kind of very dry. I was thinking my students will be snoring if I make them read this book. And the second one, that's the reflection of the story I had in my mind. It's very vibrant, it's full of life. Um, half of the page is in Kamai, half is in English. But I had to buy this through some bookseller in France and it was shipped to me. It's not readily available. So my first question was, what's up with the books? Why can't you find uh, VMK stories as readily available as, let's say, the Ramayana. Then, um, is the VMK essentially a Buddhist text? That was another thing, because here's this transformation from a Hindu epic, which Ramayana is, to a Buddhist epic. So can we tell our, can I tell my students that it's essentially a Buddhist text? Um, then, what's up with the monkeys? The monkey character is so powerful there, and there are so many monkeys in other um, stories from Asia. And then, um, can we say that the love story of Rama and Sita from the Ramayana is similar to the uh, to the love story in the VMK? And another thing that was very interesting to me. What is the transformation? What does the transformation of the story tell us about tradition? So, how do we view tradition and innovation through the story of the Ramayana? Okay, so um, I talked about the translation, and I'm sorry, I have a black screen, so I have no <laughs> clue what's going on. So I'll just stand here. Um, so it seems like the printed text is not even that important for the transmission of the story. And I had this Western idea that I need a text, yet I got so much of the story not through text. So visual arts are important. And visual arts, you can clearly see that this is a Khmer story as opposed to a Thai uh, version of uh, the Ramayana. So Hanuman is always the white monkey. 
Sugriva red, Lakshmana, golden white, Sita white, Rama appears in green, mostly in a special mask, right? So you almost can decipher who's who by looking at the colors and the way the characters are depicted. If you don't know this, then you're like, who are all those monkeys? <laughs> you don't know. So there is this extra layer of meaning that you can get through uh, visual arts. And then you know that the traditional dance, traditional Khmer dance, uses a lot of stories from the Riem cave. And here's an interesting connection between the Khmer mythology and the story, because this traditional dance, all these movements, were actually inspired by the movement of the Naga. And here's this powerful snake that we encountered on so many occasions. And there is this myth about the creation of the Khmer nation. There was the king from a faraway land, he wandered into the wilderness and he encountered the Naga king who had a daughter. And he said, if you marry my daughter, I will make sure that you prosper and your kingdom will be prosperous. And that's the beginning of the Khmer nation. So in one story through dance, we can see those different layers of storytelling. Okay, now let's talk about the connections that didn't even seem like the connections when I was experiencing them. Several things. Some of them got um, our fortunes told, read to us, right? And um, I know that, for example, Carrie was on the hunt for those palm leaf books where you place the book on your head, you put the pen in, and your fortune is interpreted. Um, what I didn't know is that some of those palm leaf books, they are the, the compilations of Buddhist texts but also the passages from the VM cave. So, for example, you stick your pen into it and Sita is kidnapped by Ravana. Probably not a good day for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, another thing, remember when we were watching this shadow puppet show? We were watching it at Vat Bo, or Vat Raja Bo. I have a picture of me in front of the Vat. This Vat is the second Vat in, uh, is the second place in Cambodia where there are extensive murals that depict the whole story of the VMK. The one was at the Royal Palace. I had no clue. I stood next to the door to the Vat and I didn't enter. <laughs> so that's why as I was telling, it would be great to go back for a repeat visit. We, we miss so much stuff. Um, so Buddhism and Hinduism in the VM cave. It's hard to tell where one story of one tradition ends and the other begins, because if you look at the Khmer culture, you can see how many influences actually come together. Remember this site? you do have some um, Hindu um, depictions, you do have some Buddhist depictions, and for me, that's what the text illustrates. It doesn't illustrate uh, that it's strictly a Buddhist text. It illustrates the layering of the Khmer tradition. Yes, it's essentially a Buddhist country, it's essentially a Buddhist story, but it has the undertones of the beliefs that came before Buddhism. Okay, now Rama and Sita, Priya Rim and Nyan Sita. And um, in the original uh, Ramayana story, uh, Rama is an avatar of Vishnu. So he pretty much a reincarnation of a god and He's much revered, but he also has to portray all those qualities. In the Riem in some versions it's mentioned, but it's definitely not a key element of the story. So Rama pretty much is a king, not necessarily this avatar of Vishnu. 
and the VMP <coughs> translates as glory of Rama. So it's much more about Rama, this living king, um, and then um, in the original Ramayana, Rama goes to war with Ravana. It's a divine mission to restore the peace in, at the universe. In the Rian case, more just a war. Ravana did a despicable deed. He kidnapped Sita. That's why Rama goes after him. And then treatment of Nian and Sita is very different. Sita is perceived more as an ideal wife uh, than a powerful goddess. That she manifestation of a powerful goddess that she is in the Ramayana. So Sita kind of just shows all those traditional values that in Kamai culture are associated with a faithful wife. And um, so if you look at the VMK, it's much more about living people. Rama and Sita are quarreling at the VMK. At some point when Sita is too mad at Rama, she says, you didn't treat me well. I'm not gonna come back to you. And in some versions of the VMK, Rama decides, okay, I will lit up a funeral pyre. So she thinks I'm dead, she'll come, right? <laughs> it totally makes sense. It's this dramatic, sometimes it has a feel of a soap opera, and it's decidedly not so in the Ramayana. So it's the story that is inspired by the Ramayana, but yet it's totally original, and it provides you with some very interesting ideas. Okay, and here's the Hanuman. Uh, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> very handsome monkey. And uh, here was uh, one character whose name is the same in the Ramayana and in the VMK. And I think because Hanuman is very hard to make Kamai, in a sense, because if you looked at the monkeys that we encountered in Cambodia, real monkeys, they're kind of dirty, they're scratching themselves, right? They're not those mighty warriors. And a lot of scholars talked about it, that it's kind of a hard leap to make Hanuman very Cambodian, in a sense, because monkeys were, um, uh, Kamai people have always shared uh, with their kinsmen in Southeast Asia strong feelings against monkeys. So if real monkeys are those deplorable creatures, how do you make the character of Hanuman, who's in Ramayana as such a powerful, mighty monkey, appeal to the Kamai people? So. Uh, monkeys have two faces, therefore, in the VMK. One is kind of comic relief, and Hanuman in the VMK is quite a Casanova. He will sleep with quite a few females. But yet, when the occasion calls for it, he's this mighty monkey. And I think it's very interesting. And definitely Hanuman from the VMK is very different from Hanuman from the Ramayana. Okay, I think that I will skip this and I will just talk about possible teaching applications. So my project became much narrow in scope. I just focused on one text, but then this gave me so many ideas that in terms of teaching applications, it covered quite a few classes. Uh, for me, it was striking that then people in Cambodia talked about tradition. They expressed very strong opinions about kind of don't touch the tradition, don't change anything. And when I talk to my students, they're pretty much like the Odyssey has been here for so many years, we can do whatever with it, it's our heritage. Whereas the Western students who has never encountered the fact that the tradition can be destroyed and it was on the brink of destruction in Cambodia. A lot of people who taught Khmer literature, they were killed. A lot of traditional dancers were killed. So now people look at tradition as something that is very fragile and needs preservation. So that provided me with a good starting point when we were talking to my students who are 
learning about the works of literature of antiquity, like, is it a living tradition? Is it a dead tradition? What can we do with the tradition? Is it even um, compatible with innovation? And um, so we talked about it in World Lit 1, in World Lit 2. Um, we talked about this in my Comp 1 classes. How does your heritage inform your world view? Um, another thing that came out of this project is that we all saw the same thing, but we saw it through the lenses of our disciplines. So for example, for my Comp 1 class, I knew that Stacy was interested in case studies. So I solicited her advice. I'm like, give me some case studies for my students. And actually I'm thinking about possibly incorporating her case studies in my Comp 1 where the students are writing about their cultural experiences, their views on the world. And then um, um, I also, everything is a sign <laughs> at this point, things are starting to come together. So then we had Lauren Shaw here and she was showing her movie, Anchor's Children. It was right after the kids in my world led class uh, read the Ramayana and we talked about the VMK. So they watched the movie too and I asked them whether they saw any connections between our discussions on tradition and innovation and this movie because the movie is about modern day Cambodia and how traditional arts are used to propel the youth to the future. Um, but now I'll just shut up. Everything seems so exciting to me and it seems to work, but I know it's my perspective. I might be very excited about Anchor's Chil children and my students might be bored to death. So I didn't plan it this way, but Genesis Martinez, <laughs> she's currently one of my students and she's been through, um, so we did the reenactments uh, of uh, the Ramayana the students used the storyline, but then they made it their own. So they did some reenactments. I was blown away, but it might feel very different to the students. So if you can, just talk to us about those group reenactments and maybe watching Ankar's children. And yeah, so oh, one more thing. Out of 12 students <laughs> that we have currently in class, two did their final project on the Ramayana, VMK, and different versions of the story. Okay, thank you. So for me, uh, it's very interesting to see this perspective of Kamai culture, and when we read the Ramayana and see this perspective of this um, culture um, embracing uh, these um, cultural things, I think it was really interesting uh, to see the perspective of them and uh, in, in including the monkeys and all this journey that Rama uh, did. So I think it was uh, really interesting also to be the culture and the traditions implied in the movie too. For me, I saw when uh, it was uh, actually, it was relating the, the experience of two females uh, that actually inherited the, the what happened in the Kamai roof. And I think it was really interesting for me to see that they still through generations, generations were uh, feeling the same as their ancestors did. And the fact that Cambodians uh, are really close to the family, but they, don't, they, they were not able to express that to their um, sons and children was really interesting for me, because I think the pain they, fe they felt during the Khmer Rouge was really was painful for them, and they were not able to share that, uh, that painful moment for them. But I think that the movie was really interesting for me, because they were able to express and heal the the pain through art and uh, and expressing themselves. So I think it was really interesting for me to see how they were able to chant this and to connect with this their root. And uh, I was able to to see one of these females that they were chanting in in Mot. I think it's pronounced. I'm not sure. Mot. I'm not sure if I'm pronounced very well. Smart. Smart. Smart and I think it was very emotional. I think even though I was not able to understand, I could feel the emotions that 
it was not a singular, uh, particular thing. It was really something that was beyond that, beyond life. And I think that was really interesting for me how they were able to to express themselves through art and uh, through music, and also uh, that was the way that they could express and could heal the, the pain that they had through this painful moment. How was it for you to express? your ideas about Ramayana through this mini play that you staged? Well, Ramayana for me was uh, interesting to see all these uh, love stories around it that it says like um, um, Ramayana is a love story because of Rama and Sita, uh, all, all, uh, all the plays around, but I think it's, it's actually portrays traditional uh, culture of Cambodia, and even though we see, as you said before, it's just a compilation of different cultures. As we see the Cambodia version, we see a lot of versions of, of the Ramayana. And I think one of the most important thing of uh, the Ramayana for me was to see how how this love story turned around and how Rama was able to, because he thought that um, Sita was cheating on him, was doing things bad to him. And I thought it was really interesting to see how this role of gender comes from a long time, even though traditions, if in, in different traditions. So we see this coming along a long time. It's not just, we see now that men and women are different and women also have uh, this perspective of being uh, related to, uh, to demons and to do bad things all the time. And we see in, through the class, I have been able to know that it's not just in our culture, it's in different cultures and it's come along a long way ago. And that for me was that really interesting to see that always women are, has this bad connotation. Blamed. Yes, blame for everything. And Sita, <laughs> <laughs> Sita was blamed because actually um, Ramana had her kidnapped and he thought that it was because uh, she wanted to be there. And I think that was really interesting to see this common thing that we see today in this um, Ramayana 